untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a banned colored party deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And by the way, in recent weeks we've been getting a lot of very close results in the polls, so make sure to join the Patreon if you want to be part of the voting process and help decide which deck ideas come to life. But for now we're taking a look at a banned party deck titled Let's Get Shifty, because we're playing a ton of the new shapeshifters from Kaltheim, which have the Changeling ability, which means they have every creature type, which is incredibly useful in a party deck that's trying to assemble all four creature types between Cleric, Rogue, Warrior and Wizard, as now our changelings can kind of fill out our missing roles. And one of the shapeshifters in our deck is a Realmwalker, which is also incredibly synergistic in this deck as a 2-3 changeling. And as a Realmwalker enters the battlefield, we have to choose a creature type. And in this case, we're going to choose human. And then we can look at the top card of our library at any time and cast creature spells of the chosen type from the top of our library. And if we take a look at our statistics here, we've got 12 actual humans in the deck, in addition to 8 shapeshifter changelings, which we can also play off the top if we name human. So about one third of our deck we can play off the top of our library with the Realmwalker, which can provide a ton of card advantage. And then of course we've got some of our party payoff cards with Archpriest of Iona, a star 2 with power equal to the number of creatures in our party, and at the beginning of combat on our turn, if we have a full party, target creature gets plus one plus one and gains a flying until end of turn, so that can potentially give us access to a bit of evasion to get in a ton of damage. We've got Overwhelmed Apprentice, a 1-2 wizard that when it enters the battlefield, each opponent mills two cards and then we scry two, so these are just cheap one drops to help us fill out our party a little bit faster. And then we've got the full playset of Nimble Trapfinder, a 2 mana 2 1 human rogue. And Trapfinder cannot be blocked if we had another cleric, rogue, warrior, or wizard enter the battlefield under our control this turn. And at the beginning of combat on our turn, if we have a full party, creatures we control gain the ability to draw a card whenever they hit the opponent. So that can potentially provide a ton of card advantage, especially with the evasive abilities on Trapfinder, Archpriest, and potentially Squad Commander, allowing our entire squad to attack without any repercussions. Then we've got the full playset of Guardian Gladewalker, 2 mana 1-1 one, one with Changeling, and when Guardian Gladewalker enters the battlefield we can put a plus one plus one counter on target creature, so by itself it's essentially a 2 mana 2-2, two, two, but has a bit of upside since we can potentially spread out the counter where it's more beneficial. And then we've got the full playset of Tajuru Paragon, a 2 mana 3-2 elf that's also a cleric, a rogue, a warrior and wizard, so much like the Changelings this helps us fill out our party. The only drawback is that it's not a human, so we won't be able to play it off the top with our Realmwalker. But we can also kick Tajuru Paragon for 3 additional mana, in which case we can take a look at the top 6 cards of our library and put a card that shares a creature type with it from among them into our hand, so that also includes Changelings. Another 2-drop that could be quite good in this deck that you would probably have in the sideboard if you're interested in best of 3 would be Masked Vandal, as another Changeling that can potentially take out an artifact or enchantment by exiling a creature from our graveyard. Then at 3 mana, besides a Realmwalker, we also have two copies of Linvala, Shield of Seagate, a 3 mana 3-3 three, three Angel Wizard with flying, and at the beginning of combat on our turn, if we have a full party, we can choose a non-land permanent an opponent controls, and until our next turn it cannot attack or block and its activated abilities are also shut down, and we can also sacrifice Linvala at any point, regardless of having a full party, and then choose Hexproof or Indestructible, and creatures we control gain that ability until end of turn, so that can potentially save our team from a sweeper effect. And then topping off our curve at 4 mana, we've got the full playset of Squad Commander, a 3-3 Core Warrior that when it enters the battlefield creates a 1-1 white Core Warrior creature token for each creature in our party, so up to 4 tokens. And at the beginning of combat on our turn, if we have a full party, creatures we control get plus 1 plus 0 and gain indestructible until end of turn, so they can easily attack and overwhelm the opponent. Also great with our Trap Finder as we mentioned, as we will get to draw a ton of extra cards. And then we've got some additional interaction with 3 copies of Journey to Oblivion, which costs 1 generic mana less to cast for each creature in our party, so potentially just costs a single white with a full party, and then when it enters the battlefield we can exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls until Journey leaves the battlefield, and then finally 3 copies of Spoils of Adventure, which also costs 1 less to cast for each creature in our party, so potentially just a single blue and a white to gain 3 life and draw 3 cards, so another nice way to refuel. 
And then going over the mana base, we also have access to all the new pathways from Kaldheim. So now we have access to all 12 of them. So the deck wouldn't really function without these, since this is an aggressive deck that wants to be curving out and can't really afford too many tap lands. But we do have four copies of Fabled Passage as additional mana fixing alongside two basic forests, three islands and three plains. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw with a pretty nice looking hand. Turn one, Apprentice. Turn two, can decide whether we play Paragon or Gladewalker. And then Realmwalker to provide some card advantage. Hopefully Apprentice can scry towards one of our party payoff cards. Trapfinder, Archpriest, and there's Trapfinder, or our four mana warrior. And another Realmwalker and Limvala. I might just want to keep lands on top, put it on what looks like a Death Touch tribal deck. So finding Squad Commander to make a bunch of 1-1 Shum blockers might be the way to go here. And then turn to probably just play Trap Finder. As we see Finn. Could play Paragon to potentially block Finn, I suppose. Yeah, they might have another one. I don't know, I'll take the one for now. Keeping a full party is pretty important for the deck. Alright, time for Realmwalker. Name Human. And I would love for my opponent to leave themselves without any good blocks, so we can maybe sneak in a full party attack with Trap Finder. Falmar Knight adventured and played. Archpriest we can play for free. And then we'll play Trap Finder. And then... Can make Realmwalker gain flying. Have to be a little careful that we don't die to Death Touch shenanigans. So maybe just Realmwalker attacks and everything else stays back. And then this can be a green source. All right, and now we're fine trading off some creatures and trying to preserve a full party at the same time. Questing beasts we can still trade for Archpriest. So block, block, block. Could be one potential way to do it. Yeah, this seems good. Up to 8 poison. So we have to be careful if they play another Finn from hand. Alright, Linvala, sadly I cannot play off the top. So probably just wanna add more to the board here. With Paragon. And then I could Spoils as well. Or I can Glade Walker to get a full party and then draw some extra cards. Seems more exciting. And where to put the counter? Trap Finder maybe, and then I'm fine double blocking Grim Dancer. So we've got the card advantage going now. Just gotta try and stay alive. 
All right, there's Finn, so we can double block the Menace Death Touch creature here. It is kind of exciting trying to stay alive with eight poison counters against a Death Touch deck. So now what? I really still want to find that Squad Commando, but we haven't been able to find it so far. If I play second Realm Walker, I might want to change my creature type preference. Step one, can play Paragon and Linvala. And then I can prevent Blightfang from attacking or blocking. Just send in Trap Finder. And then just play this. All right. We're not that to a hasty questing beast. Vengeful Reaper, flying Death Touch Haste. All right, so that's gonna trade for Limvala. And a Blind Blade. So Realm Walker lets me spoils for two mana. And this one probably names Warrior, I guess. Don't know if there's a better creature type to name, but Warrior seems good. And then we'll draw. All right, wizards, I can play for free. Bottom, bottom. And Journey would be a great draw, so I can attack with Trap Finder, which is unblockable. Draw into Journey and cast it for one mana to get rid of Finn. And we've got another journey waiting on top. Opponent maybe had a questing beast and thought they could kill us. Ooh, Vengeful Reaper. Yeah, they would have done it too if it weren't for the journey. So super close game here against the Death Touch deck. They gave us the GG's before the game was actually over. So... Should be trivial to stabilize from here. I guess just double block like this, keep our Realm Walkers, take three. Seems good. Play some free cards over the top. And there's my warrior at long last. So that should end the game. Sweet. So yeah, squeezing every bit of value out of our synergies here to defeat the scary Blank Green Death Touch deck. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with what looks like an acceptable hand. Fetch up a forest right away, turn to maybe Paragon, and then we'll see if we picked up a land or if we did not. Opponent taking an awful lot of mulligans, so this might be a Tibal's Trickery deck. There is one card that I considered playing and even tried out at some point, which is Concerted Defense, which is very good at countering a Tibal's Trickery. Although it's kind of difficult to play too many of those non-creature spells, since you need a high density of creatures for your synergies to work. So Journey to Oblivion and Spoils of Adventure are the few non-creature spells that we ended up including. So play Paragon, next turn probably just Realm Walker. 
Although Temple of Plenty not usually a temple you see in the trickery decks, although there's a mountain. And Stone Quill gonna get countered by trickery. Now Journey could potentially answer some of the cards they hit. Ooh, Garrick. Okay. Gonna make some wolves. Stay on the trail. So we can't quite journey. So I could play Realmwalker, which maybe gets destroyed by Garrick. Or I could, I guess, play Trap Finder, which they probably ignore. Sure. And then I'll probably fetch a second White Source. And then next one we can journey Garrick. Can ult at minus six. I'll take it. <laughs> you cannot run or hide. I didn't want my opponent minusing Garrick on the Realm Walker. A three three Stone Quill as well. Yeah, that's problematic. It's a lot of power and toughness on the board. So just got a journey, Garrick. Now Ramwalker does block the wolves, but I might be too low on life to fully uh, stabilize. Now I'm definitely fine trading. Alright, so Realmwalker first, see what's on top. Human. Alright, get to play free Gladewalker here. And then we gotta leverage our rare here to hopefully find more creatures and eventually take over. Alright, that's a human. And that's a nice card for next turn. So, can probably afford to attack now. A lot of spoils. And squad commander is excellent here. So we'll add, I guess, an extra green source. Full party achieved. And we can fly, I guess, Archpriest. And my opponent concedes. All right, sweet. So luckily our opponent didn't hit anything too backbreaking that we couldn't manage with a Journey to Oblivion on turn two. And we managed to eventually outgrind them with Realm Walker after our opponent didn't really do anything else. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a bit of an awkward hand in that we need to get both white and green mana, so don't love it. All right, this is better. Get to curve one drop, two drop, three drop. Does that mean I get rid of spoils and then just hope to draw another card draw spell? I think so. Let's see what we're up against. Turn one Battlefield Raptor. So green-white, maybe playing some enchantments.
set us in champion. Our opponent must also be playing the new 3 mana Runeforge champion. Get to untap. And I'm sure my opponent's just dead here. So, move to combats. This cannot block. And then we'll jump. Uh, I guess let's see if I jump the 1 1 attack with all. They can go chump, chump, and then they're still dead. GG's. Alright, so on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand has potential. I can play Apprentice to look for white mana, and then we potentially get to have a pretty nice curve. Let's give it a shot. Got multiple two drops we can play in the meantime. And yeah, there's my white mana. Probably don't need a second Glade Walker. So opponent maybe a mono black. Freebooter gonna take my spoils. And then I guess Glade Walker for now. The next turn I can Trap Finder plus Archpriests with a full party. And then I just need land four and we'll be in business. Underworld Dreams makes sense. I will actually take quite a bit of damage off Underworld Dreams. My opponent could have a Sweeper next turn, Extinction Event comes to mind, although we will have a nice split of even and odd mana costs and Limvala doesn't help against the Exile effect. So yeah, turn 3 full party thanks to these 1 drops is quite nice. Draw two. And there's Fable Passage for next turn, so Squad Commander could deliver the beatdown if our creatures are still alive. Freebooter stays back. So Spoils of Adventure doesn't cost me any life at least, since we'll essentially gain the life right back. I think we go for Squad Commander still. Could play Linvala, which can maybe help against some removal scenarios. But at this point it feels like if they had a sweeper they would have cast it last turn. And then blue or white. Let's go with white. So opponent probably playing Underworld Dreams plus Peer into the Abyss for the two card combo. Grasp of Darkness kills Archpriest, but still have a full party here. Thanks to that changeling. Creatures are indestructible. Opponents down to six. And we have Journey as potentially an answer for the enchantment. So, do they have a sweeper? Needs to be a pretty specific one, since I don't think Extinction Event will do it. Ooh, Grey Merchant. Alright, that got pretty close to killing us, but not quite. And now we can just get rid of this annoying Underworld Dreams, so we can draw all the cards we want. And uh, I guess play Limvala. Grey Merchant can block and get in there. So I guess if they're playing Grey Merchant, they might not be on the Peer into the Abyss version, but just trying to play Underworld Dreams to slowly drain someone out. And provide ample devotion for the Grey Merchant, which sadly hasn't seen a ton of standard play, at least not as much as the first time around. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with 
a powerful but slow hand, so it does rely on drawing into some 1 and 2 drops in the next few turns. But being on the draw and having so many potential hits, I think we still keep. Although if we don't do anything until turn 3, it might end up being too slow. Can hold Fable Passage for now. Our mana situation at least is going to be good. Opponent on Esper. So it looks like a control deck and we did pick up a 2-drop we can play here at least. Apprentice on top. Alright, so we're starting to assemble a bit of a party here, although I'm sure my opponent's gonna have some sweepers to uh, slow it down. Although, never mind, Sanctum of Fruitful Harvest, so a five color Sanctum deck. Those are known to play Extinction Event as their sweeper of choice, so we'll have to keep that in mind as we develop our board. We do have Journey as a nice answer for Sanctum. So, what's the play? I guess I can play Apprentice first. And then maybe scry something to the top that we can cast. Bottom the Paragon, I think. Ooh, nice. So we get to play a Gladewalker. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I guess we'll play it and then fetch up a white source. This can put counter here. Assuming my opponent plays Extinction Event, naming Odd. And then we get to Journey. Sanctum. Could have attacked first to draw a card, but I didn't want to draw the land, but we fetched and there's another land on top, so that's okay. Alright, let's see if they have Extinction Event, and even if they do, we can refuel quite nicely. Sanctum of Stone Fangs. And Elspeth's Nightmare killing Realm Walker. That's fine. So we still have a full party as we play Squad Commander. And then I'll keep both of those. Maybe I should be actively digging for another Journey to Oblivion, but I think we'll be fine. Bones at 5, get to draw 3. Second chapter of Elspeth's Nightmare is not gonna grab anything. So Extinction Event on Even now, I guess, is pretty effective. Instead, it's just a Garruk. Makes two wolves. And I'm not even gonna count, I'm just gonna play another squad commander. Archpriest and Smash. I think this will be enough. Yeah, that's enough. Alright, sweet. So yeah, our uh, band's party deck. Definitely performing quite nicely here. Having access to the pathways means it's much more likely that we can potentially enable a full party by turn 3, since we can more easily deploy our 1-drops, which are very important to get to a full party that quickly. And then our payoff cards, both the Trap Finder and Squad Commander, are awesome payoff cards, as well as the Realm Walker, kind of the glue that holds the deck together, giving us both a card draw engine and an extra changeling to make sure we have a full party at all times. So yeah, Band Party, a deck that does have some 
customization options, like I mentioned throughout the video. We've got Masked Vandal as a nice sideboard card to deal with artifacts and enchantments. Concerted Defense, if we're worried about control decks playing sweepers or Tibal's Trickery decks, can counter those as well. And I'm sure there's more cards we could consider, like the Bears of Lejara is a card I tested out in the deck, ended up cutting it, but definitely a powerful inclusion if you end up with more changelings after sideboard perhaps. So there's a whole lot of cards to potentially play around with. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.